Hello and welcome to another video on Progressive Coder. Today we are going to continue our Nest.js learning journey. In the last video, we saw how to create a new Nest.js project from scratch. In this video, we will take one step further and learn how to create a Nest.js controller. Covering this is important because it will take us one step forward in our goal of building an actual application in Nest.js. If you are new to the channel, do consider subscribing and don't forget to press the bell icon. Without wasting any more time, let's start with our discussion. So what is a controller? The job of a controller is to handle incoming requests from clients and return appropriate responses to the client. However, it is quite possible that every request differs from each other in some way. The difference might be in terms of the HTTP operation, it can also be the parameters that are part of the request or the path itself. So how does a controller handle these differences? Controllers basically use a routing mechanism to route incoming requests to the correct controller. This routing mechanism determines how a particular request should be handled. For example, request path F00 goes to controller A. On the other hand, the request path BAR goes to controller B and so on. Let us look at a simple controller implementation in Nest.js. As you can see, flight controller is a typical class. We use a special decorator controller to designate the flight controller class as a Nest.js controller. Behind the scenes, a decorator such as controller attaches some metadata info to the class. This metadata information helps Nest.js create a routing map. Notice the controller decorator. It takes the string value flights as input. This is basically known as a path prefix. It tells Nest.js that any incoming request to the route flights will be sent to the flight controller class. Point to note here is that the path prefix is a purely optional parameter but it is a great tool to help us bunch together a set of related routes. I recommend using them wherever possible. Moving further, the flight controller class has four methods. As you can see, each method handles a particular HTTP request method. For example, the get all flights method handles any get requests to the flights route. Other methods handle post, put and delete methods. All of these handlers are under the same path prefix of flights. While the request handlers in this example perform the job of handling requests, they are not that useful. To carry out any meaningful operation, request handlers need access to the request details sent by the client. Nestchase provides access to the request object based on the underlying platform. By default, the underlying platform is Express. To access the request object, we need to simply instruct Nest.js to inject the request object by adding the req or request decorator to the request handler signature. In the request handler, we use this decorator to bind the incoming request object to the request variable. This variable is of type request from the Express package. So what is this request object? Well, this object represents the HTTP request itself. It has properties for request query strings, parameters, HTTP headers, and also the request body. While we can manually extract these values from the request object, Nest.js provides dedicated decorators to make things easy. The table here shows some of the important objects and their associated Nest.js decorators. We have request and response followed by the next function from Express. We also have param, body, query parameters, and finally headers. Let us look at a few important decorators. Whenever we design a REST API, it is a common requirement to accept dynamic data as part of the incoming request. For example, if we want to fetch flight details for flight ID 1, our request path would be like get flights slash one. 
here id1 is a part of the route it is also known as a route parameter token in this case our route handler method should be able to deal with such dynamic parameters basically we would like to get access to the dynamic id and do something with it this is where the param decorator comes in handy first off we add id to the get decorator this basically tells nestjs to expect additional parameters in the route path next we use param to decorate the method parameter known as params this makes the route parameters available as properties of params inside the body of the method note that param is imported from the nestjs common package there is another alternative way to extract a path parameter in this approach we directly specify the parameter token name id in the param decorator this grants us access by name to the id parameter within the body in my view the second approach has better code readability especially if we are dealing with more than one path parameter anyways moving on the next important decorator is the body decorator it is a given that we would need access to the http request body at some point or another while building applications path parameters are simply not sufficient to transfer multiple fields in such cases we pass data using the request body nestjs provides the body decorator to extract the request body from the http request object as an example suppose that while calling the post method for creating a flight we pass the flight data as part of the request body we can get access to that particular data by decorating the flight data variable with body decorator then we can simply access the flight data within the method this was all about the request object but equally important is the response object thankfully nestjs automatically handles the response part depending on the underlying platform basically when a request handler returns a javascript object nestjs will automatically serialize it to json format if the handler returns primitive types such as a string boolean or number nestjs will simply send the same value that is what we saw in the example still now however nestjs also allows us to use the library specific response object if needed to do so we need to use the res or response decorator to inject the response object in the method handler then we can call library specific methods to handle the response in this case the underlying library is express as you can see we can also set the response status code using the library approach just like we do in a normal express application this leads us into another question if we don't use the library specific approach can we modify the response status code by default in nestjs all http methods except post return the 200 status code post returns 201 or created however we can change it by using another decorator http code and supplying the status code the http code decorator is part of the nestjs common package note that this is again a bit of a static approach to set the status code in reality a status code may depend on various factors in such cases we might still need to use the library specific approach or throw an exception of some sort more on that in future videos so that was all about how to create a controller in nestjs this takes us one step further on the path to create a nestjs application if this video was helpful please do like and also leave a comment it helps the channel grow and reach more people see you until next time